So the guy's name was not John. The, the name tag clearly said Alonzo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. And so, no, I'll agree with you. It smacks a little bit of racism. I mean, the fact that he said Big John specifically and the yeah. fellow was big. Right. If he was a real small guy, maybe it's, you know, it's like calling the giant guy tiny and it's endearing. But it, uh, yeah, it, it smacks a little bit of racism. My question to you is this Would it be more or less racist, less racist, for the old white guy to call the young black clerk? Big John or John Henry, <laughs> since his name was Alonzo. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing? Same thing. It's a wash, either way. Big John, John Henry, one's not worse than the other. Right. I feel like John Henry might be a little bit more opaque. Like, Big John, you could at least make the argument that you were, hey, it's just buddy. It's John is a, John because John Smith, John Doe, that's, that's a very... Generic name. Yeah, if you're talking to a white guy, obviously it's John Smith. <laughs> but if you're talking to a black guy, it's going to be John Henry. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. I like tattoos on women more than I like tattoos on men. I mean, more than I like <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. 29% of my meat's horse meat. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I don't even remember what we were talking about, but I'm almost positive you're wrong. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. And the implication is we're going to drive you uh, to death <laughs> in a contest of wills. And maybe and maybe it was me. May- hey, man, maybe it's undercover racism myself that I thought that simply because it was an old white man saying it to a young black man. Well, that like, wasn't your first been, thought. If it had been an old black man saying it to a young black man, I would have thought it was just a cultural thing. Like, See, it's it common. Sort of, <laughs> maybe there's some John Henry cartoons that I don't know about. <laughs> no, Mike, but my thing is that you didn't, that wasn't your first thought. Your first thought was... Oh, he knows the guy. Oh, he knows the guy. Yeah. And then as you're getting checked out, you realize his name's not John. His name is clearly marked on his on right. his lapel there. And his name is fucking close to John. His name is Alonzo. It's not. It's not. Rem- yeah, it's not remotely close to John. I don't maybe know. Maybe it was Josh or Jim, and the old man just couldn't see. No, that is not the case. Uh, welcome to Two Guys One Podcast. I'm one guy, and I'm the other, and this is the podcast episode ninety nine. Hurtling, my friends hurtling towards our 100th episode, our second anniversary. Um, I'm really so proud of this. I really am. And I appreciate everybody who's already congratulated me. I've had a few people say something about it in person, which is cool. I've had more people say something about it online. Um, I want you, we want you to call us and be a part of the 100th episode. We want a lot of people to say happy birthday or happy anniversary, happy podiversary, uh, or just fuck you. The phone number is 504-613-5635. That's 504-613-5635. Call us and say happy podiversary or uh, or fuck off uh, to twoguysonepod.com. They're uh, our second anniversary. Yay! We could um we could have gotten pregnant and had an elephant by now. <laughs> That's well that's true. What do you think the gestational time would be for a cross you know, sure elephants gestate for 18 months or whatever it is. But if you were having an elephant alien type hybrid, would the would it wouldn't be 18 months, right? It would be some shorter period than that. It could be longer, man. That's unknowable. <laughs> Where is Ridley Scott's movie about this? We need an answer to this in Prometheus too. Um do you want to, I have a Cubs joke. Do you want to hear my Cubs joke? Sure. Here, I, I tell you See, what. See, it's okay to get, look, man, I don't have, I understand the team I affiliate with. <laughs> I don't mind getting, like, if, if it's a baseball fan ribbing me, sure. cool. Okay. If it's somebody who doesn't even watch a fucking game, <laughs> that's something different. This is one I heard this week, and I, I, like, even though I don't watch baseball, I found this one humorous. And so I was like, all right, this is I got to pass this along to the other guy and see whether this passes the smell test. All right, you ready? Okay, so so last Sunday, a week ago now, uh, they lost to the Braves, becoming the third team in MLB history to, to lose 10,000 10, games. Yep. 
Cubbies can't even win at losing. Yeah, I've heard that one already. <laughs> to the rundown. Which, which, knowing that they're the third team to reach 10,000 losses, and these dudes have been around a while. Uh, yeah, how, I mean, baseball in general is how old? So here, what? Well, so here's my thing. They're not as bad as what people think they are. Um. Well, I don't know. How bad do people think they are? That they're the first with ten thousand losses. You would have thought that. Yeah, I thought they were the. One that I would. Well, ten thousand losses is a tremendous amount of losses. Like, and I would have said, well, only a handful of teams even have a shot at it. Well, you gotta think it's a hundred and sixty-two game season. And I mean, I know that intellectually because I've railed against it. I've said for a long time they could have it and and still you'd still get all the baseball you need. But you can't play the players what you're playing them and they're already on they're already on contract. No, that's very true. That's that's the problem. That's the, you can't contract the season at all because the money will never go down. Right. Um mm, I don't know how to thing I was going somewhere with that, but you're I You're going into the why. rundown. Oh yeah, that's right. Let's go with the rundown. <laughs> In this week's show, we're going to have a uh, word of the day for you. We've got maybe the greatest old news of all time. I don't know. I'm interested. This, I mean, this is the old news that keeps on giving. I love that we do 1920 slang and old news, which is slang some of these old fuckers probably still use. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, that's true. Uh, we've got an if you could. Uh, we've got a who are these guys? Who who? And uh, and then we'll wrap things up with a word from Bob Ross. Um, oh, by the way, I'm following Bob Ross now on Facebook. I, no, I, you're not. Okay, I like Bob Ross on Facebook. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah. Well, I no, I like the pay. I like the Bob Ross page on Facebook. There you go. Uh, and they are posting Bob Ross quotes. As the page, not like every day, but from time to time, I'll see it in my news feed. Mm -hmm. So it's potentially, we. I'm not adding everyone that they tweet because not all of them are that great. But we've got the potential to add some to to the uh, the list there. This The Bob Ross quotes may last longer than I originally are thought they would. Are these actual quotes from Bob Ross or is this just some fucking jackalope who no, created this page and is putting down quotes that he feels like are in the vein of Bob Ross? No, 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 absolutely not. This is the real, this is the for real deal. This how do, how do you know? Uh, because it's like the official page or whatever. What the fuck does that matter? I could put the official page on anything that I created. No, that's not. That's is not Bob true. Ross alive? Uh, no, he's not. But the family, like the estate, is still out there. They're still doing stuff with that name and brand. Well, that's that's fine. It's not him. It could be some. some maybe he's got a son. Maybe he named his son Bob or his second son Bob. So they get in their way with saying that it's Bob Ross. No, I'm. You're not listening to me. I am aware that it's not actually Bob Ross that I am following on Facebook. What I'm saying exactly. is it's the official. It, right, but you don't know if what's being posted are quotes that he said during his lifetime. No, but what? Why did they're taken from the show? They're not. They're not like I don't trust. They're it. not like in general the quotes that we've been doing. They're taken from the show. Why? Why? <laughs> we've been using BobRossQuotes.com. That's what we've been using on that our show. That sounds way more official than the official Facebook page yeah. of the, of Bob Ross. Yeah. Do you have to pay for it? Com. Yes. Do you have to pay for a Facebook page? No, but right. Facebook verifies oh. it. There. There, you cannot, you cannot take They're a celebrity. They're also selling shit to the government. I don't believe them. Oh my gosh, you're ridiculous. This is why, this is why they don't allow you. You know what? You're not ever going to be allowed back on Facebook. I don't want to be on Facebook. Uh, uh huh, uh huh. You just, you wait, sir. You wait. Your times are coming. Speaking of Facebook, you can find us at facebook.com slash two guys one pod. Well, you can't find us. You can find me and things that this guy says. They should change that name to the Tower of Babel. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I'm doing right now? I was trying to find. Oh, there it is. Excellent. The Wikipedia page. I'm looking. I'm doing some research for the other thing we're going to do here in a minute. Have you listened to our other podcast, friend? 
Did you know that we have another podcast? You can check it out, podonpod.com. We review podcasts to help you find your next favorite show. Check it out with a new review every week uh, at podonpod.com. Subscribe to it in iTunes or on Stitcher. Find it on SoundCloud or YouTube. Just search Pod on Pod, a guide to the world of podcasts because it's not your daddy's radio. All right, that's enough plubbing. Never, ever, ever, ever. What? Fucking ever. Call our listeners friend again. Mm. Why? That's very creepy poltergeisty. <laughs> Hello, friend. Yes. That's so creepy. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> well, that's not that's not poltergeist. <laughs> um you ready for the word of the day? I was born ready. <laughs> All right, here's how we do the word of the day. Uh, what we do is we have a little 1920s slang. It's uh, a word or a phrase that was popular in the 1920s. We're trying to bring it back uh, by using it here on the show. And then um, once we use it, maybe you'll use it in conversation as well. Um, we've had some great ones. Yeah. Uh, for instance, if uh, you've got a nice lady friend, you might call her a choice piece of calico. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Or if you're lazy... You do dropper. Indeed, yes. Uh, if you're looking for booze, that's giggle water. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's another good one. And if you're trying to buy booze without money, you need to go tell it to Sweeney. Indeed, indeed. All right. This week's word of the day is hay burner. Hay burner. All one word. H-A-Y-B-U-R-N-E-R. Hay burner. Well, I think in the 20s, I'd be pissed off if somebody came into my fields and burned my hay. Um. If you were lucky enough to own any fields. Yeah. Indeed. So I'm saying I'm thinking that a hay burner is just a dick. <laughs> just a rude fellow in general? Yeah, fucking hay burner. Uh, very specific, uh, and you're incorrect. Hay burner, a car with poor gas mileage, or a, a guzzler, you might refer to it as. If it, was, if it uh, took a lot to keep that car running, that was a hay burner. It's a also like it, you know you get some bad oil or you got to uh, leak it smoke out of the exhaust like you're running rich. Ah, uh, maybe so, so that it's smoking too. Right. So it looks like like uh, if you burned a pile of hay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that one. That's a hay burner over there. I wonder if that rolled into rice burner. Mm, I don't think so. I think the rice burner is just a. Uh, a generic Foreign Asian card, slander. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, well, they that's don't what happens have... when you're driving that fucking rice burner. Yeah. Exactly. All they have to but burn. But it would have been the same thing rice. in the 20s. That's what you get for driving that fucking hay burner. Same thing. Uh, except the hay was, was only indigenous to here. I mean, you know what I mean? Like the hay, like where else was hay, where else was hay coming from? You can get hay everywhere. Well, yeah, sure. But we were getting our hay from here. So I'm saying to call something a hay burner would not have had the geographical. Right. What I'm saying is a hay burner is a car with like poor gas mileage and gas issues. It doesn't run well, right? Mm. That's made here in America. And a rice burner is a car that has the same outlook on it that's from a place that's, guess what, known for growing fucking rice. That's all I'm saying. God damn it. I see. I see. All right. All right. Fair enough, then. All right. Um, that's our word of the day. We'll try to slide that in somewhere uh, if we can. Uh, right now, it's time for old news. And I didn't bury the lead. I promised that this was the greatest old news of all time. I think it's going to live up to it. You know, I don't think this show is suitable for children. I don't think this show is suitable for anybody. <laughs> I don't know, man. We've had some good ones. And we have had some good ones. That's because this is this is a great segment, and you keep supplying me with really good stuff. Do you have, like, I want to know what you have. What, what tag are you searching uh, on the Internet to find stories of old people? Because so far I haven't, look, I haven't found any. I'm not searching. They just come up. I'm not searching tags. I just pay attention. You just pay. You just got your ear to the ground. Look, huh? most people our age ignore the old. I don't. Oh, does your does like your people say ignoring the future? I mean, ignoring <laughs> the past, and you're you're um, destined to repeat. Destined to repeat it. Well, old people are our future, and if we ignore that future, we're destined to follow in those footsteps. <laughs> All right. Um, 
This story's got everything. This story's got celebrities. It's got uh, politics. It's got... Um, oh, I know what story this is now. It's got death. Yeah. It's a sexy story right here. Headline. Clay... Hey, this comes from BuzzFeed, by the way. Headline. Clay Aiken wins Democratic primary day after congressional opponent's sudden death. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they thought he wasn't man enough to run for Congress. <laughs> Fit right in. Apparently he got voted off. Um, Clay Aiken has won his primary in North Carolina a day after the death of Keith Crisco, 71 years old, who is challenging the former American Idol runner-up. All that, all that lard money, man. I was just going to say, what do you, would it... Would it uh, <laughs> Would it surprise you to hear that Keith had hardened arteries? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he was challenging the former American Idol runner-up for the Democratic nomination in the 2nd Congressional District. Uh, so uh, Clay Aiken won more than 40% of the vote necessary in order to win the three-candidate race, according to the county-by-county county tally posted by the state today. Who, who's the who's the other fucking candidate that you get beat by a dead guy? <laughs> by a dead guy and Clay Aiken. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. The state election board will review the, the result before they become official. Uh, with the meeting tentatively scheduled for May 22nd, the AP reports, it's unclear whether Aiken will accept the nomination. Having said yesterday, he was suspending his campaign following Crisco's death. He was suspending his campaign because campaigning was no longer necessary. Over. <laughs> if, let me just tell you, if you and I are racing, and in the middle of the race, you die. <laughs> look, here's the deal. I, I'm going to stop running. <laughs> here's, here's the deal. People are going to look at this and like think that it's a weird Clay Aiken thing, right? Right. No, sir. We need to le- look deeper into that third candidate's past and issues. An old man dies, and the guy who wins may not take the job. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the third guy didn't have to run because he's got dirt on these cats. Um. All right. Congressional candidate Keith Crisco, who was challenging American Idol runner-up Clay Aiken for the Democratic nomination— died, uh, this is uh, three days ago now, in a fall at his home in Asheboro, North Carolina. The fall occurred apparently around 1 p.m. His death was confirmed by officials with Asheboro Elastics Corporation, the textiles company that the candidate founded in 1986. You know what your grandma would call this guy? What? A pussy. I, I would call him silly. You work for an Elastics Corporation and you don't have something to keep your old ass bouncing if you fall down like if i'm you know how you know how in the santa claus as soon as he turns into santa claus and he actually buys into the whole thing he begins to badger the elves about what happens if he falls off of a roof because that's what happened to santa claus that died before he became santa claus right he's like i don't know how i'm gonna go but i don't want to go like the last guy i'm saying if i'm an old man a magnet in the elastics industry I'm walking around going, hey, I see these old people fall a lot, and that seems to be the death of them. What if, what if, uh, what if we put, I don't know, rubber barriers around my uh, kneecaps and hips? Could we do that? Could that work? Let's try that out. Can we get a prototype of that working up? Also, it's like personal child proofing. That's what I'm talking about. It's it's Gramps proofing. What? How big is the uh, how big is the elastics industry these days? Like, uh, it's probably, it's probably, sh- it's probably <laughs> shrank a little, but it'll still stretch. <laughs> Saying it might bounce back. Yeah. That's at least his hope. I was so thrown off. I mean, with a last name like Crisco, I thought for sure I knew where he got his political money, but you know, apparently not so much. They weren't into the, uh, lubricants. I don't, I mean, <laughs> I understand that Crisco has a lot of different properties. It doesn't technically count as an elastic, does it? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. Um, Crisco allegedly a plan to concede the election. Raleigh political consultant Brad Crone uh, told WBTV, at his instruction, I had called Gary Pierce to convey to, that Keith was going to concede the election tomorrow morning and would be calling Mr. Aiken to congratulate him, Crone said in an email. Though the State Board of Elections released a statement expressing sadness at Crisco's passing, they did not specify what will happen next in the election. 
Crisco served as a city council member in the town from 2003 to 2009 and was then asked to serve as a state commerce department secretary by then governor Bev Perdue. Um, Clay Aiken said in a statement that he was suspending all of his campaign operations. He says, I am stunned and deeply saddened by Keith Crisco's death. Keith came from humble beginnings and to ashes he has returned. <laughs> no, that's not what he said. He said, no matter how high he rose to Harvard, to the White House, to the governor's cabinet, to my boot as I beat him in this election, he will never forget where he came from. And now he will never return to anywhere else. He was a gentleman, a good and honorable man, and an extraordinary public servant. I was honored to know him. I'm suspending all campaign activities as we pray for his family and friends. My question to you is, do you think Clay Aiken has it in him to push this old man down a flight of stairs? I already told you it's not him. It's a third candidate. What hope? Good, what, what good is it for him to do this? Even after the man's death, he, he didn't poll in large enough numbers to merit any mention he didn't have to if clay aiken decides not to take not to take the uh the seat no i think i think clay's going to take the seat he's just not responding to these uh, comments and questions or you know um queries for response because he's letting the man be buried first you know the election's already done he's going to be announced as the winner and then he'll have a chance we'll go back to the beginning of this article okay Pretty sure Clay Aiken says he may not accept the position. Uh, it is unclear whether Aiken will accept the nomination. Having said yesterday, he was suspending his campaign following Crisco's death. We, I think they just miss it. I think this is BuzzFeed not being a political reporter. Like whoever is reporting this is a entertainment reporter. All I'm not saying a is, reporter. I'd watch my back if I were Clay Aiken. <laughs> Accidents happen. Well, maybe that's what Crisco was doing. Maybe he was watching his back and tripped down the stairs. He was too worried about getting pushed. Or maybe he was fucking old and shouldn't be in a house with stairs. <laughs> he was a paranoid old man. <coughs> like this is this is what you learn from that. Once you get to a certain age, move to a house that doesn't have stairs. I, uh, but again, if you were an elastics guy, there's the answer right there. One, okay, I was thinking, okay, we need to like wrap me in in rubber somehow. You just hey, build a house I, out of rubber. Exactly, I want a rubber, not a rubber room. You know how in an asylum asylum we have rubber rooms? I want a rubber house. Can we have a whole rubber house, guys? Come over and pour that shit everywhere. That way, hey, I've fallen and it's no problem at all. <laughs> that would be a whole different commercial. Maybe me and you could sell that. Now that's a look platform that. I can get behind. <laughs> I've fallen and it's no problem at all. Um, that was this week's old news, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to put up the the link because I want you to follow this story. Um, I, I don't understand what Clay Aiken was running. I, I mean, I guess I had heard that he was running for office. I'd forgotten all about it. Why? Why do we think our American Idol contestants are? I mean, why? Why? What platform is he possibly running on? I want to make sure that Congress he's harmonizes. Got, he's already got American <laughs> right there in the title. Right there in the title. Wasn't he the runner-up? Like, didn't he lose that? I thought. Uh, I don't know. Do you, do you did, have you ever watched American Idol? I watched season five. I've never watched it. And season six, maybe. I watched two or three years in a row. The, when the old guy won, and he wasn't really old, but the, like the gray haired guy with the raspy voice and the harmonica, you don't know who I'm nope. talking about. There you go. When he won, I was around. That was the year that Daughtry was on it. You know who Daughtry is? The rock star, the bald rock star? Nope. <laughs> Look at that. You really have avoided the entire phenomenon. Are you familiar with Simon Cowell? Yeah, I know that guy. If I said, it wasn't for me, dog. Yeah. Look, 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 I get the references, okay. and I understand that it's big enough that it has pretty much permeated the fabric of our great nation. America. Doesn't, doesn't mean I know specifics. <laughs> I got you, I got you. I think you and I should pitch a new reality show. Called I Don't Give a Fuck. No, to CMT, and we should call it Merkin Idol. <laughs> Just drop the, <laughs> drop the A, put a little apostrophe <laughs> in. It's Merkin Idol. They can only sing... And I'm proud to be an American 
by what's his face? <laughs> or no, man, they could do the national anthem. There you go. God bless America would probably America work. The beautiful. Oh, 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 and the Toby Keith song "Angry American." You know the one where he'll put a boot in your ass. <laughs> yeah, that one. Mercanoddle. <laughs> coming soon to a CMT station near you. All right, let's do an if you could. You sent me this one actually a couple. If you of could weeks build ago. a house out of anything, what would you build it out of? <laughs> uh, rubber, <laughs> uh, fucking rubber. We established this earlier. <laughs> this there is one. There is but one answer, and it is rubber because that can be your forever home, <laughs> sweetheart. This is a house we'll never die in. <laughs> how how large of an echo, of of an epidemic was dropping babies to get the tongue twister rubber baby buggy bumper? <laughs> Like, that had to be a pandemic. What do you mean? <laughs> because it's such a pain in the ass to say, the fact that anyone ever says it uh, means that... Well, I don't think there ever was a rubber baby buggy bumper, is what I'm saying. That's uh, fine. People are obviously crying out for it. <laughs> I don't think people are crying out for it. I think people... I think it's like Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. That never happened either. Well, no, I mean, but pickled happened. peppers are a thing, <laughs> and you yeah. can pick peppers. You can even pick a peck of them. <laughs> and you could change your name to Peter Piper. Well, I mean, you could. <laughs> that would be you could You could be named Peter and decide to become a piper. If, if Peter Piper <laughs> ran for Congress, <laughs> would you vote for him? Um, I don't know about that, but in the town that I grew up in, well, you know, well, we'll save that for we'll save that for who are these guys in a moment. We'll get back to this shortly. <laughs> My, I think if if I'm running uh, for uh, a political position, okay, I'm gonna change I'm gonna change my name to uh, to any kind of nursery rhyme. Just I'll for be Georgie the- Porgy. <laughs> but George, it sticks Georgie Porgy for city council because it sticks in people's mind. Look, look, dude. Most of the people that vote don't do the fucking research. What is what, what was Georgie Porgy's rhyme? Georgie Porgy, was he the one that played with the girls and made them cry? Yeah. Okay. Jack Horner? Um, well, fuck it. Here we go. Who are these guys? In my town, in the town where I grew up in, the following people are all real people that were adults with prominent businesses that I knew as real people growing up. Merry Christmas. No. I swear to God. Who married? Ben no. Christmas. Hey, we, there's a Ben Christmas here. Merry Christmas is probably his cousin or some shit. Yeah. There's Merry Christmas. She married... No fucking kidding around at all. Jack Frost. I swear to God, she married Jack Frost. Jack Frost was a was a well known real estate guy, and now Merry Christmas and Jack Frost are in not only bed together but business as well. His signature move: the cold shoulder. <laughs> no, he'll put your deal on ice. Ooh, oh, nice. <laughs> My my question to you if is: If you ever want to chill, come over. We'll have a couple drinks. <laughs> now, I thought those two names were like the best possible names that you could have, and then I met Jack Fluck. Oh, I, I've seen commercials for a Fluck. <laughs> yeah, have you, Jack Fluck? I've seen, I've seen, I've seen Fluck and billboards. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Jack Fluck, and occasionally he'd do the Fluck and. Uh, in his advertisements or whatever, hey, you know, we'll make you a Richard fucking Fluck. deal. Richard Fluck, Dick Fluck. <laughs> Come why, on down to the big house of Dick is, Fluck. If your name is Fluck, why don't you change it? This is the house that Dick Fluck built. <laughs> what's what's the most ridiculous real name that you've ever encountered? That's easy. 
It's an older lady. Okay. She just remarried. She must be in like her late 60s, maybe. All right. I swear to God, before she was married, her name was Caress Cox. C O X. Yeah. <laughs> no. She married her. Her maiden name wasn't Cox. She married into it and became Caress Cox. <laughs> That's even worse. I knew. I knew Cox is a very common name. Yeah. Caress isn't. No. No. Caress is weird. But if your last name is Cox. You have got to be don't be don't be prideful. Don't brush it off like, well, everybody else will just get used to it too. No, it's silly. It sounds funny every time somebody hears it. Every time someone hears it for the first time, once they get to be your best friend, maybe they'll forget about it. But the first time they hear it, they hear dick. They hear penis at the end of your name. They hear whatever your name is, Joshua Penis. That's Joshua Cox. Joshua Penis. I'm talking about my penis. That's what they hear. So you got to be cognizant of that when you name your child. For instance, you can't name your daughter Caress Cox. Well, she wasn't born Caress. All right, Cox. but she she's she got to go into the into marriage. The job. She, she fell into the she fell into the job. Caress and Cox there. Well, I mean, I guess she signed she signed on willingly to caress the Cox. I, for oh children, my. it's a whole yeah. For children, it's a whole different bag though. <laughs> it's a whole different bag of dicks. I knew in in high school a Chase and Russell Cox. That's right, the bro- the Cox brothers, Chase Cox and Russell Cox. <laughs> you got to do one before you do the other. You got to chase them down and then you wrestle them up. <laughs> Woo, those are all terrible. All right. To the if you could, sir. You have to have one addiction but it can be anyone you want it to be if you could choose any addiction but only one which what would it be winning (laughs) so you want to be michael jordan yep don't you see it's a hateful existence i think that that's got to be like he's that man has everything and he literally seethes every night you don't you don't know you're not in his fucking bedroom no, but you see what he does in public. He like you see his reaction. The, they gave him a fucking lifetime achievement award or whatever. He entered the basketball hall of fame, and the whole fucking speech was about all the people he still was better than. So you're taking one day, you're taking one speech, and you're blanketing his whole life. No, his I'm whole saying- existence. Around that, anytime you have it's a bit short sighted. All right, anytime you have more than a thirty second soundbite from the man, his continued anger at anyone who was perceived as slighting him over the years is like right there. That doesn't necessarily. He's not the only that one. Necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's built that way because his addiction to winning. All right, let's go. Let's look at other people who are quote unquote addicted to winning. Pat Riley. Pat Riley said it himself. The losing hurts more than the winning feels good. Every everybody that I've ever known in in the sports. So world he's not addicted to winning. He's got a fear of losing. It's not fear. He's talking, but he he loves the winning. That's what he's chasing is the winning. But what? But the but the love of the winning, the the addiction to winning, causes nothing but pain in anything, uh, in the absence of that. I mean, I guess you're saying that's the very nature of addiction. Any yeah. What are you, you going to be addicted to? Let me let me fucking Swiss cheese the shit out of whatever <laughs> you're going to say. <laughs> hmm. Tell you the truth, I hadn't thought about it much. You brought it up. I, you're the one that sent it to me. I, I don't just... remember. <laughs> um, I don't know. There are lots of good things to be addicted to. I wouldn't want to be addicted to anything obvious. I don't want to be addicted to alcohol. I've seen alcoholics. I don't want to be addicted to smack or heroin or something like that. I would. Can I be addicted to podcasting? You can be addicted to smiles. You fuck. <laughs> Like, way to be a pussy about it. It's if you could. Like, this shit's not real. I don't want to be. Um, I don't want to be addicted to smiles. And let me tell you why. 
Because sometimes smiles are hard to come by. If it's fucking raining and cold outside. So then you would be the one smiling, you rictus grin <laughs> joker motherfucker. It's not hard. <laughs> no, but then I can't, but I can't see me. Like you can't. It's called a mirror. All right, but that's, you can't, uh, it's like the, the, you know, the law of thermodynamics. Like there's no, you can't create and you can't, there's no creation and there's no dissolution. So like I can't feed myself, I can't feed my own smile energy is my point. If you were addicted to it, you'd sure as fuck find a way. <laughs> you can't you can't get high on your own supply is my is my thing there. So no, I don't think you Look, could. Crackheads can't always find crack. Doesn't mean they're any more or less addicted. <laughs> eh. But I'm so that's what I'm saying. So I'm looking for something that I could always supply myself with. Don't dude, just say the first thing that comes to your mind. You have an addiction. What do you want it to be? I did podcasting. That's what That's I said. That's not a god damn it. Why not? What a you said that you, you said you could be fucker. you said you could be addicted to smiles if you wanted to be. Why is podcasting? Any I was less? being facetious. <laughs> she would have been angry if I would have chosen smiles. Yes. <laughs> All right then. I was trying to point out how ridiculous <laughs> your statement was. All right. How about orgasms? Okay, that's that's one we can get into. All right, yourself. Or I think others. we've already gotten into a couple of uh, receiving orgasms. You you would. I mean, I'm a giver. Don't that's, get me wrong. What a horrible, crippling addiction you chose. Why you would never leave the house, <laughs> or you'd be you'd be arrested in theaters. Oh, that's a problem. That's, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, that would be like the not just a sex addiction. But since it's like the very basis part of sex, and I could always, I could, I've always got a shortcut. I've always got the like, like the eject button. You'd have, you'd have a calloused <laughs> dick. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. All right, back that up. Giving then? No, no, no. Sir. That would be worse, even, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because then, because then you know what you are, a rapist. <laughs> well, and, and no, there's no nobody's nobody. nobody <laughs> that assumes that there would at least be certain points where I are, couldn't are find people, a willing are participant. Are people are people generally addic- addicted to hardcore drugs? Thieves? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, you oh you gonna want this orgasm? I'm yeah. gonna give it to you. Yeah, when and don't look so bad now, does it? Eh. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, so we can agree addiction is a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, regardless, even if it's a good addiction. Um, what about if you were addicted to driving your hay burner? That would be the worst addiction because then you would be broke too. No. Boo. Our 100th episode is coming up next week, people. You got oh, one. Hey, I, got a, I got another name for it. Okay, what? Other than potiversary. Yeah. Other than anniversary. Other than birthday. What would you call it? Solange. <laughs> Whose side are you on? Do you think, do you, first of all, Honey Bun, this got mentioned in passing on something that was on the TV in front of us today. In case you have not heard, Solange, who I did not know was a person that existed, but she's apparently Beyonce's sister. Beyonce. 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 Yeah. Beyonce, which rhymes with fiance. I just did not know it. Anyway, <laughs> her sister is named Solange. She's an R&B singer of some sort, I believe. I, I, I don't know. With well, a name like Solange, she better be. Yeah, she better be. She's either that or she's a nice, uh, you know, dessert that you get at the potluck uh, supper at Christmas, you know, I mean, at church on Sunday. Um, so Solange comes into the uh, elevator with Beyonce and Jay Z and Jay's. And Jay's and, their, and his bodyguard uh, and. Begins to beat the ever living hell out of Jay Z a little bit. Tries to anyway. See, you fought. It's you're you're doing fucking sensational, fucking reporting. She attacked him several okay, times. How, she attacked him. Okay. She beat the ever loving hell out of him. Let me tell you. I mean, <laughs> she just went to it. Brought in a goddamn two by four. Where she got that? I don't know. I don't think I said it quite like that. No, but that's what that's that shit drives me crazy, man. She attacked him. All right, fair enough. She attacked him. Yeah. Repeatedly for like three and a half minutes. How do you, what, again, again, 
a fucking gin. Why even add in repeatedly? The attack never really stopped. She came in with the intent to attack somebody <laughs> and did her best to attack this guy with a bodyguard holding her back. I mean, just because she was in mid-attack and the guy yanks her back two feet and then she goes back to attack, that's not two separate, that's not a repeated attacking. That is an attack. (laughs) She attacked and continued to attack. No, she just attacked him. That's it. All right. (laughs) She was unsuccessful largely. She was only mildly successful. How about that? Sure. (laughs) Okay. So this got mentioned in passing on the television, though. And just offhandedly, Honey Bun remarks tonight. She says, yeah, because Beyonce had her man's back. (laughs) Now, I didn't make comment because I didn't really want to discuss it (laughs) at the time. But now it occurs to me that I would like your opinion on this. As I watched the video, it, it struck me that Beyonce was not exactly having her man's back. She seemed to be mostly staying out of it. Here's the thing is, I didn't even notice her in the video (laughs) at first. I I didn't I didn't notice her in the video at all until Mrs. Other Guy pointed her out. Oh really? And I even argued with her. I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Beyonce's not even in in the elevator." She goes, "Yeah, yeah, she is." Uh, so, but do, did you not see the other woman at all, or did you? Just no, I didn't see another was... woman at all. <laughs> she just literally blended into the background. Yeah, it's the only time in her life that Beyonce hasn't been noticed. <laughs> yeah, didn't notice didn't notice her her at all because I was like, "What the fuck is?" Why is he in an elevator with her sister anyway? See, that's kind of the, like I don't. The whole thing struck me as strange, but like that honey bun would address it as specifically she was standing up for a man or whatever. There were times where the bodyguard clearly had her separated, where Solange was not even actively pushing up against him. She was just wagging her finger and obviously yelling at, fussing at, whatever, continuing her verbal attack on Jay Z. And at no point in that did Beyonce interject or, like, respond to or answer or whatever. Jay-Z was trying to play it stone-faced. Every now and again would have a response or reaction. And a couple of those reactions set Solange off again. But anyway, I just thought that odd that Honeybun interpreted it as Beyonce was standing up for a man. And I interpreted it as, hey, you, why don't you throw a little uh, job in there? Stand up for your... Why don't you, you tell don't- your sister to back the fuck off, maybe? You don't know what, nobody knows what was said. There's no audio. Yeah, no, I know. That's, it kills me. This is, I want this, I want the audio of this. Like I want like the original footage of the Zapruder flick. Do you like, want, seriously. do you want, do you want audio in elevators now? Are you okay with getting in an, in, in an elevator and knowing that not only are you being filmed, but you're being recorded? Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> okay. That's a good if you could. And worthy enough. We got some time. Let's do that for a second. How's that if you could? The answer's no. Okay, for, so for you the answer is no. Because to me it's there's a give and take there. Okay, I could have for I instance, don't even I don't even fucking want video cameras in elevators. <laughs> oh, really? Really? There have been so many interesting things that I've seen that have happened Dude, in an I elevator that I'm going like, to, I'm glad I that stopped we do going that. to Mardi Gras when fucking they started putting video cameras on fucking phones. <laughs> it ruins everything. <laughs> you were like, well, fun. now they'll know what we've done. <laughs> No, it causes congestion. Every motherfucker's fucking ape arm in it. Uh, that's true. They, like concerts have turned into like a like a gigantic sea of of cameras or whatever. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's a little silly. All right, all right, all right. There's, I guess, n- never mind. It's, I guess that would not be. But boy, I would love to fucking have this particular audio. Why? Though. I really want to know what the conversation. What is she so pissed about? Who who cares? The neighbors down the street fight all the goddamn time. You don't give a fuck what they're saying. Well, yeah, but but but, the, but but there are celebrities, and I gotta fucking set them up like idols and worship every goddamn word they say because no, I'm a mindless fucking idiot. No, it's not just about the celebrity. It's mostly in this case, it's about the money. Like we have, we have the idea. So there's another thing for you to idolize money. Keep going. It's not Let's about idolizing money. But that we have this idea in this country that money fixes your problems. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. No, we don't. That's that's what they preach. All Who? you got to do is work. Who's they? They. The the all present. The they. collective. Yes, the collective. The collective tells you you work hard. The you shit, bust your ass. The shit that we make up 
to make ourselves feel better about ourselves. Yes, exactly. At the end of the at the end of the day, if we've worked hard and we achieve, then we'll get a big pile of money, and that money will solve all of our problems. Because rich people don't worry about the shit that you worry about, and that's kind of true. You know what people who think like that are called? Who? Sheep. <laughs> Mad other guy. Like I know, I I know you're smart enough. To not think like that, and that no, you're speaking, and that you're speaking for what you think and how you feel the populace feels, because you think they're nothing but sheep. No, I don't think they're nothing mm. but sheep. I don't think they're nothing but sheep. I think that it's easy to get swept along. I think it's easy for me to get swept along too. Keep your head down, keep your nose clean, focus on your own business, and everything's gonna be all right. <laughs> Except even once you get to the top of the hill And even once you're fucking Jays And you're married to Beyonce Then Your sister your sister law still gonna get in the elevator And bitch at you Dude, I'm pretty sure Jay-Z minutes. said it himself He got 99 problems Just because he's a rich <laughs> motherfucker Dude, And here's the other thing is, like, We see these people We see celebrity right Like oh man Jay-Z has like Beyonce is so beautiful Like She's amazing. He's got the hottest wife. She's so talented. He's so lucky. How do you know her fucking farts don't smell like corn chips? <laughs> and she's constantly gassy. You don't know that. My father, my father told me when I was a very young man, son, no matter how beautiful she is, just know that somewhere, someone is sick and tired of putting up with her shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on that note let's go to our zen thought for the week a word from bob ross you ready i'm yeah i'm starting to peter out now <laughs> all right good you make me see i this is becoming a trend <laughs> and i don't know if it's just what my voice for this show is going to be <laughs> i think you got a lot of anger in you i I guess, man. <laughs> I I sense much anger in but you. But I feel like I feel like sometimes you say shit knowing it's gonna make me angry. Sometimes it makes for good podcasting. Maybe my addiction is pissing you off. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's believable. A word from Bob Ross. This comes from Bob Ross Quotes dot com. Oh, you'd be in Agony City by now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Bob, you got it. Nailed it. Wonder who he's married to. That was the follow-up question, to What if I'd taken the elevator with Solange? <laughs> oh, you'd be in Agony. Should have taken the stairs. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget about our 100th episode. It's coming up next week. Call us, please. 504-613-5635. That's 504 504- 613-5635. Thanks uh, for making our first two years so successful. Uh, share us with a friend and uh, make our next two years that much better. You got anything to add, sir? No. All right, good. On to the next one. <laughs> Until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm unhappy. <laughs> And this has been the podcast. I got my headset in the mind red, and I'm gonna get. I got my reset in my regress, and it's gonna hit. Call it an offset or a protest, call it whatever ness. You don't wanna mess with how I'm gonna dress Baby, you never did I've got my red leather jacket on 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 I got my headset in the mind red and I'm gonna get what I'm gonna get when I'm gonna get cause I give a shit call me an offset or a protest I'm an all red and I ain't gonna eat to what you're gonna need cause I don't wanna be I've got my red leather jacket on I've got my Oh, I've got my red leather jacket
Upset that I got it again like, because you were angry at me and you'd forgotten. Yeah, because this is what you do. You get me riled up about something toward the end of the show. <laughs> I jab with the left. Yeah, I jab with the left. And then you work in the word of the day, the which left. just pisses work me off even more. Work the body. Jab with the left. <laughs> and then I go for the right hook. Oof. And then, and then the only recourse I have is I'm not doing the fucking show. I'm just gonna sit over here and be quiet. I'm going to be eating my Welch's fruit snacks and drinking my Red Bull. You know what that means I would do? I would plug the show again. <laughs> <laughs>